This right here is exactly what Wuthering Waves needed, and Kudo have been waiting for the opportune moment to announce it. Now, if this is your first time here, consider subscribing to the channel, hitting the little bell notification, that way you remain up to date with every single thing that I post, and I post daily, do not miss out, at 6 a.m. this morning. Well, the 6 a.m. yesterday morning, as of posting this video, Wuthering Waves posted a tweet stating Wuthering Waves version 1.3 Black Shores broadcast will be live on the 20th of September at four o'clock Pacific time. Available on our official live stream channel for a duration of 30 minutes. Make sure to join us for the broadcast. Watch live on YouTube. You can also catch the live stream on Twitch using this link. They have a beautiful image depicting both the male and the female rover. We can clearly see the shorekeeper butterflies that are present throughout various stages of the game that accompany the shorekeeper character. Uh, spoiler alert, I guess, for those of you that weren't aware. The female rover though, and the male rover though, like every time I see them in official artwork, I just can't help but appreciate how well designed these characters are. This is a beautiful depiction though of I guess a place in the Black Shores. The reason why I'm of the impression that this is the biggest, best thing that Wuthering Waves potentially could have done is because after the, the overwhelming debacle that the uh, the pre-release live stream was, Kudo were silent. They chose not to follow up the 1.0 live stream with a 1.1 stream or a 1.2 stream. Many people were critical of this decision, stating Kudo are too afraid to live stream any future patch now because of how horrendously received, how horribly cringeworthy the first one was. And I'm not gonna defend it, the first one was horrible. Yeah, there were parts in it that, that triggered a laugh from me. It was amusing, but generally, it was not entertaining. It was not professional at all. Like, at every point since Wuthering Waves released, Kudo seemed to have learned from their mistakes which is evidenced by the fact that they have confirmed the duration of the live stream is only going to be 30 minutes long. This means that they are going to be concise. They are going to condense everything down into a 30 minute presentation. This means there is gonna be no fluff they're gonna get right to the point, show us exactly what they wanna show us. They're not gonna to have tons of live guests. They're not gonna be doing mini games, doing trivia, eating weird food. No, they're gonna get right to what they wanna show us, exactly what we need to know. Probably a trailer for 1.3, maybe showcase some of the areas, some of the lore, some of the characters, maybe hold an event, release information about future events, maybe tease 2.0. This right here is proof actual undeniable proof that they know what they're doing, that they are learning, that, that they are progressing as a studio. Now, at the same time, I do think that spreading out the live streams is a good idea. I don't think they need to have a live stream for every major patch. I know people assume that because Hoyo does for their games, every single studio needs to as well, but that's just not true. They don't need a live stream for every major patch. I actually kind of like reading through the patch notes and then doing a video on it, kind of experiencing it over like an eight to 12 minute period with all of you. It's easily condensed, it's easy to navigate, and you don't have, you know, 20, 30 minutes, an hour, an hour and a half of useless talking that doesn't really contribute anything at all to what's going on. That isn't to say I would turn down a 30 minute live stream for every Every major patch 2.0 3.0 4.0 or I guess in this instance they believe 1.3 to be a significant patch which is why I'm they're doing it so I don't know 1.3 and then 2.0 then maybe 2.2 or 2.3 if they deem that significant enough I don't think they need to have live streams for every major patch I don't think they need to do what Hoyo does they've established themselves as their own game their own company they need to distance themselves from everything Hoyo is doing. And while this right here should be enough to whet your appetite, they did also make another tweet stating, Wuthering Wave's special record, The Shores End, It's Why We're Back. This is a two and a half minute video that they uploaded to their YouTube channel. I saw this on my TV when I was in bed last night and I was like, dude, I wanna watch this so bad. I don't know what it is. 
I, I, for all I know, it could just be a music video. And if that's the case, you're not <laughs> gonna see it as part of the video that I post, but I'm hoping it's more than that. Before we go any further, let me take a moment here to thank my incredible patrons over on Patreon and my YouTube channel members. Well, allow for me to continue to do dedicated videos like this every single day. You guys are phenomenal and I can't thank you all enough for the support. Now let's keep talking. What I'm hoping is that this is actually like some kind of teaser or trailer for 1.3, 1.4, or 2.0 even. Jeez, I drank a full bottle of water almost. <laughs> okay, this is louder than I thought. Okay, so... Oh, no! That, oh, that's a Broken Shores! Okay. Holy crap, this is beautiful. And the music is so good. I just saw Mount Firmament. And Jua? Oh, my God. Oh, this, this is an information overload. Wait. I think that's male rover and the shore keeper. That's male rover and the shore keep. Okay. Holy dude, this is this is fire. No, is that it? Female rover and shore keeper. Okay. Oh, and there's Camellia. Shorekeeper, male rover, Camellia. There's Encore and Alto. Oh, there they all are. Hold on, wait. Wait, so male rover, Camellia flirtatiously uh, teasing male rover, followed by Alto, Encore pulling it, Alto's cape, and then Shorekeeper in the back. Okay, I, I'm just, I'm gonna replay that bit because the music was just so beautiful, I didn't get to properly hear it. Wow. Oh, what's happening? Female rover? Wait, they're all disappearing. Oh my God, she looks good. Yeah, they're emptying my wallet. God damn. Dude, this music is freaking phenomenal. God damn, we're gonna see her. Oh, we it's are why we are back. Dude, the voice acting is phenomenal for Shorekeeper. We are back. It's why we are back. She sounds like something out of Xenoblade Chronicles. Damn. Holy crap, that was beautiful. And I just want to point out, I love her titty tacit marks. They're front, they're great. Wow. God damn. That, I mean, there's only, there is only one word for this. Flawless. Not a single thing wrong with it. And there we have it. What is arguably the biggest reveal, biggest announcement, most important announcement of Wuthering Waves to date. A follow-up live stream. What is arguably one of the best trailers released, teasers even, released for the game. I cannot wait for 1.3 and 1.4, and I can't wait to see what they do with the live stream. Please, please, Kudo, tell me you have learned from the debacle that was the first live stream. The future of your live streams and your ability to reshape the stigma that is surrounding you as a a cringe laughing stock when it comes to live streams not games but when it comes to live streams 
needs to stop with this one. You need to prove people wrong. I believe that you got this. <laughs> Don't let me down. Hey, hey you, where do you think you're going? Don't you close out of this tab. I didn't give you permission to do that. Sit your ass back down. Click one of the two videos that are gonna be on screen in just a moment and keep watching my content. Keep enjoying my content.